Hey you filthy beasts, Ryazine here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club, part number three. In the last one, you remember, we are making a poem. Yeah, the story's slowly getting darker and darker, and I am very interested to see where we go. So, I remember last episode we said we might be trying to go for a Sayori a little more than the Yuri now, but I don't know. I'm just going to keep bouncing back and forth between them, so unrequited. Yeah, sure. Contamination. She likes that. I don't really care much for this one. Let's do horror. She likes that one. Um, let's see. Misfortune. Okay, she likes that too. Climax. Uh, of course she likes that one. <laughs> Alright. Ambient. Yep. Let's just go straight ball and steep on this one. Philosophy. Um. Party. Empty. Oh, she likes that one. Determination. Yeah. Um, wonderful. Yeah, she likes all that kind of stuff. Effulgent. Yeah, there we go. I wonder what's up with my my quality right now. It's kind of screwed up. All right, not my quality, but it's, the game just running a little slower. Strange. Very very strange. Let's see. Vitality. Yeah, there we go. Why is she so nervous looking? Unrestrained. Yeah, there we go. Tenacious. There we go. Hopeless. Oh, she likes that one. Insight. Yeah, she likes that one too. Disown. Yeah, she likes that one too. Massacre. She's really dark. Uncanny. Oh yeah, there we go. Extreme. Okay, she's really gonna like this one. <laughs> Almost certain. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> You must have a lot of determination. You know, I was going to give them all voices originally, but I think I'm just going to keep reading like this. I kind of prefer it. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, huh. Well, maybe that, maybe not determination. But I guess... Passion. Yeah. Oh, crap. What happened? Uh-oh. Oh, that's so you can take screenshots. That's kind of cool. Okay, and I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. I just skipped some dialogue. Hopefully it wasn't too important. <laughs> ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day off of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid. That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Okay, anyways. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Huh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that Jake joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> no? Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyways. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyways? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh. Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little bit off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, so things are really coming to fruition here. This is weird. If you say so. I wordly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. 
Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Uh, Beastly, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori lately? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed any anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, silly, Beastly. Oh, I'm not the one asking you, Beastly. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it for now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? I... Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. You know, I feel like Yuri might have had, a, had something to say to her, you know? Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Beastly. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well... I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. Yeah, <laughs> you're so funny, Beastly. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Oh. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyways? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh-huh. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it. But I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me to worry about her, but I had to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her and that I'm letting her letting this weigh down so much. Now it feels like I'm the only like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation of her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to hers. Hmm. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't, do any, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell what I, that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. Yeah, of course you were. I didn't do anything that creepy like that. In any case, I, I guess you were right. I'm so sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are the only concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Nah, it's not really that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. 
so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Huh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Beastly, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, uh, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Mm-hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I notice her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Hmm. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, well, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. Th that is, I think that. She would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I, take, if I make some tea first? Oh, not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself, as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for one second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Huh? We're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me... <laughs> or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Beastly in club activities? Huh? Oh, that was... that was kind of snippy of you. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Beastly. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room and... Well, I follow. That was strange. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, I think, you know, you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Beastly. How come even when I do something bad, 
you're being nice to me. Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah. Uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Beastly. I really like being friends with you. Ha. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Beastly, do you like oolong tea? Oh, yeah, I do. Anything is fine, really. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Mm-hmm. In that case, you'll only be more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around, anyway. Oh. Well, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Beastly. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Beastly, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Oh, uh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. It's probably because, you know, all that going on there. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? I always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, exactly. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Ah, fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Hmm? Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Is that my weenie? Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Mmm... -hmm. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be kind of difficult. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Oh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Ah, are you sure? It's pretty damn good. Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? 
Are you sure? Of course. Sorry, screenshot. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder... any harder of a time of reading it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips, as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Uh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. <laughs> did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh huh. Beastly. Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah... That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. I see. <laughs> the situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can't tell. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Hmm. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't even avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. Not breasts. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yari parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and press it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. This is getting erotic. Oh, <laughs> it stopped abruptly. That's probably for the best. Okay, everyone. Ugh. Nah! Yeah, Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. <laughs> that ended very abruptly, didn't it? Beastly, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I'm just gonna go ahead and drench my wang in some cold water. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Let's go to Sayori first. Hmm. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay, you're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? I mean, I broke her damn heart. I'm gonna make the next poem just about her. I don't know what I want. I'm confused. In this club? Well, I guess of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Beastly. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Uh, all right. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist, yay. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? Oh, that's sad. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Well, that makes me sad. Natsuki, I'll go Yuri last. Meh. I guess you really haven't learned anything after all. Honestly, I don't know why I got my hopes up in the first place. What? I didn't even think this one was that bad. What did I do wrong? Poems don't need to be all deep-sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Hey, you quit making fun of my poem, you little midget. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. Don't tell me. Huh? 
You're not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? Keep your voice down, dang it. You know Yuri would love this kind of, of, this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I, I mean, ugh. Looks like uh, I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Okay, Monica. I need to talk to her anyways. Hi, Beastly. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well... Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, uh, that's kind of different. I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ha. Huh. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Um, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that, too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get a much personal conversation of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. Oh no, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Oh! You completely misunderstood. Ah, <laughs> calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Well, you're the only, you're the only other person that has so far, so thank you. Uh, all right. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders Earth. The Lady Who Knows Everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose and all that was ever sought, and here I am, a feather. Last, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Twilight sky, sorry. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the, thumb, between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist, and with a breath she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. I like that one a lot, actually. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of my on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, well, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? The humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Oh, uh, yeah, that. Uh, anyway, 
Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share with your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get, an un to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want you to focus more on anything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more that encouraging that way, and it will make sure... And it will make you want to continue improving. Man, I'm terrible at reading today. I'm sorry. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, well, I guess Yuri is the last one. Hmm. Beastly. Your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really, you're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not like I really had a choice. <laughs> what do you mean? Well... Yuri smiles sadly. Beastly, during lunchtime I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just... You, would, you know you'd really make a good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me, they don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type, and and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Beastly. I'm, it's the opposite, I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Beastly. I speak too slowly, I second-guess myself all the time, I read too deeply into things, but every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, really, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, well, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are now friends, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Beach, a marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of earth chaotically meets the surface under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. But beneath the gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in, as one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet the tide comes, Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. 
yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. That was nice. I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard. After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well... It was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I see. Natsuki didn't even let me read her poem, so I don't have much to contribute. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request, but... Well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Hmm? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only different thing is Sayori isn't here. Oh. It seems you're right. Oh. Sayori will always help enlighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the time to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two in being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? That's curious. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Oh, she's ignoring it, huh? Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them, and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all of the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, no, not at all. That's not it at all. Uh, you're the most talented person here, you know. <laughs> now Natsuki's pouting too? Oh, geez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sari enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. No, oh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Uh, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Peace Lee. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. 
you could always help me out as well. It would be, I would really be appreciative of that. Well, you know, Sayori's helping you, so screw off. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Oh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if I'd... Even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Beastly may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So, therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyways? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Beastly to... What are you saying? It will be extremely uh, meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Beastly to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance of spending the time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah, yeah. Beastly, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Huh. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Uh... Oh, this is hard. I feel like this is going to be a very, very big one. Something's going on with Sayori, though. But then this, and then... Uh, uh, oh, man, this is going to be hard. Okay. Okay. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Mo would make it Yuri. Dang it. Well, I'll probably be most useful helping out a Yuri, you know. Me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, I was just saying. Uh, say you'll be helping Yuri then, Beastly. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle this baking by yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I'd be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. And do you feel the same way, Beastly? Me? I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki. What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no. That's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Beastly picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So, I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Uh, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. Uh, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said anything bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Oh. I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. 
Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out, out the door as they chat between each other. Um, yeah? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh yeah, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes? Alright then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, 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 not at all. I just thought I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I, I think I would prefer going to your house. That's a red flag to me, alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself more useful in some way. I'm not nearly as, cre as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Beastly. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? Hmm. I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But... but... Yuri thinks to herself an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Oh? Uh, I didn't realize. I'm telling you I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? Ah, uh, everything's really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. Hmm. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us, hmm? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. Oh. Well. You know what? I think that is going to do it for tonight. I think uh, next episode is going to be getting some action with uh, Little Miss Sayori there. So I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you don't hate me for making this choice. Though I think I'm going to be terrified with any of my choices, really. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one, beasts.